So yesterday I talked about how you can potentially use WAF to protect your CloudFront distribution from DDoS attacks. It turns out that that video is actually more of a lie because I got DDoSed again last night. And you can see here we got another 128 million requests, but I'm still charged for all those requests. So if I go to my distribution and look at all the requests, you can see that WAF did block a majority of them. So 63 million were blocked, but allowed was 65 million. And you can see it rate limited a lot of these requests. But unfortunately, if I go to my billing dashboard, I'm still charged for all those requests because the WAF still has to run something to verify if it should block the IP or not. So now my total bill is up to 656, which is not very sustainable to me. So I went ahead and just turned off all my CloudFront distributions. I'm going to get off Amazon because I can't uh, pay these prices for a, a side project that's not making too much money. So in this video, I am going to tell you how you can transfer over to hosts on a VPS and use Cloudflare in front of your service to potentially protect it as well. Now, the main reason I'm using Cloudflare is because it seems like it's free and they have DDoS protection for free. So even if someone tries to DDoS you, you're not gonna be charged a bunch of money for it. All right, let's just jump into it. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps that I had to take to get this set up. Over here, we have webdevcody.com, which is this site that looks absolutely horrible. I need to actually work on it one day. But this is a Next.js application. And if you follow the Next.js guide, they tell you how you can potentially wrap this in a Docker container and get it deployed somewhere. So the first step is you have to grab a Docker file that they provide you. Um, although I did have to spend some time fixing this by adding G++ make and CMake, because this wasn't working just by copying and pasting their example. But you add this Docker file to your project and then you can build it to make an image and post that image somewhere so that you can run it. Also, be sure to add this Docker ignore or your file will be very large. Let's talk about this push image sh file. Basically, what this is doing is it's logging into AWS ECR. If you don't know what that is, it's the place where you can create repositories and push your Docker images to. So I added one for Web Dev Cody down here. And I basically have this script that logs in. It tries to build my container using Linux AMD64 because I am on a M1 Mac. And then it tags that built image above with this tag. And then I push that image to my ECR instance. So after I run the script, it basically takes the image and it pushes it to this repository. And that's so that we can grab it and pull it and run it on our VPS. Okay, so that is our first step. Now the second step is you need a VPS. I went ahead and used DigitalOcean and I deleted the IP so that hopefully someone can DDoS this machine too. But I created a smaller VPS. It has one gigabyte of memory and um, I think it's like one CPU or something like that. After you create this, you'll get an IP address, which is actually hidden because I deleted it. And you're gonna use that IP to SSH into the machine and get your stuff set up. Now let's move over to the VPS side of things. I basically created this small repository called single VPS host, which has a couple of files in it. I'm gonna walk you through what these files mean. So we have a Docker Compose file, which is what I'm using to basically spin up my various services. I plan to just put all my little side projects on a single VPS to keep it easier to maintain. And I can always scale those out later if I need to. But the way the Docker Compose file works is I'm pointing to that same image that I talked about earlier on ECR. So this will run our Next.js application on port 3000. And then down here, I have a caddy server which is acting as a reverse proxy to basically point all traffic to that Web Dev Cody service. And then I also have some volume mounts for like setting up certificates and some other things like that. In order for Caddy to work, you have to have a Caddy file. So let's go to the Caddy file and look at this. Basically, I have definitions for all my services. And right here, you can see that we have a reverse proxy for webdevcody.com, which will take us to Web Dev Cody colon 3000. That is a Docker container hosting our Next.js application. And then I also have a TLS certificate setup, which I'll walk you through in just a bit, so that you can have everything working with HTTPS from when you go to your browser to Cloudflare and we go to Cloudflare to your VPS. So once you have this stuff kind of set up, I went ahead and SSH into a machine. I cloned this repo down. So I ran Docker Compose up, ran it as a daemon. And if I look at the machine, you'll see I have three services running on this machine. So I did have to set up a couple of things on this machine to get it working with Docker in ECR. Basically, I had to install Docker. And then this is all like installing Docker. And then down here, I installed the AWS CLI because it has to pull from that ECR registry, right? I will add a step here that I forgot. Basically, um, AWS configure. I need to make sure that the machine has access to pull the images from ECR. So I went to IAM. 
I created a user with an access token and a secret key, and I gave it permissions to grab and post everything to ECR. And so when I do a Docker Compose up, it'll go ahead and pull these images down and run them. So after you have the service running on your machine, you can actually go and start setting up Cloudflare. So how I set Cloudflare up is you basically walk through their wizard. So they're gonna ask you to set up some DNS records, and I'm basically saying point web dev Cody to an IP address. Again, they're supposed to be IP addresses here. I hid them for this video. And that's gonna tell Cloudflare how to point to your VPS that you just set up. The second thing you have to do is go into your domain. I'm using namecheap.com, but I'm sure this process is the same for every DNS provider. Go here and you have to set up a custom DNS record to point to Cloudflare. So basically when someone goes to webdevcody.com, that makes a request to Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a proxy that makes a request to your VPS and does the DDoS detection and stuff like that. So over here, I turned off full SSL TLS encryption. I think um, full strict might actually be the best thing you should use. Uh, I'll look into that later. Um, and that basically makes it so that you have HTTP from your browser to Cloudflare. And you also have HTTP from Cloudflare to your server. So no one can actually inspect the packets you're sending over the wire. And then I had to create an origin certificate. So if I go over here and create a certificate, that'll give you two certificates. Now these certificates are basically .pim files. It just has like a bunch of text and you have to put it on your VPS somehow. So if I go back over here, notice I have a search directory and I have a private directory. So if I were to go into my VPS host, when you clone this repo down, those will be blank, but I actually secure copied those PIM files into certs in private, and that's because the caddy file is looking for the certificates um, at those locations. The Docker Compose is doing a volume mount to that location, so if I go down here, you'll see that it's mounting dot slash certs to ECT SSL certs custom, and then same thing with the private certs. So again, this is needed so that you can have HTTP between Cloudflare and your own VPS. And I do believe that's all I had to do. Um, there might be something that I missed, but after doing all that, you can basically go to your application. You'll see that you have HTTPS set up and everything should be good to go. If you want to see how I set up the VPS stuff, you can go to this repo right here. I'll put it in the description link below. And then also I have a repo called webdevcody.com, which should, when I commit the code, will have a Docker file that shows you how to build this with uh, Next.js. Yeah, so that's about it. So this is how you can set up your VPS to potentially be hosted behind Cloudflare to protect your stuff from DDoS attacks. So I definitely learned my lesson. Um, hopefully I did reach out to AWS support and ask for potentially getting like a refund for the DDoS attacks. I don't know if they will. But I think I learned my lesson to definitely not use AWS CloudFront, um, especially if you have a YouTube channel and there's someone out there watching your videos who doesn't like you and really just wants to DDoS your system. That's the moral of the story. So leave a comment if there's anything I didn't talk about or you want me to elaborate on, I could potentially do that. But good luck. Hopefully, if you guys try to do this yourself, this video can help guide you through. If not, good luck. Have a good day and happy coding. Don't get DDoSed.